So the symptoms of awakening, probably the biggest symptom of all, is that life starts feeling like it's falling apart. You know, you're going along and, um, you know, whatever it is that your life is, it, it's what it is, it's been working. And, and, and trust me, as you're growing up, you figure out a way to, to, you know, at least you think in your mind, to control your environment and everything in your life in a way that fits somewhat into a safe and comfortable package for you. So, so that you're basically okay, you know. Because you wouldn't want to be not okay. I mean, if you're not okay, what would people think of you then, you see? I mean, imagine going into one of those insane asylums and being one of those not okay people that, that people can't relate to. You know, nobody wants to become like that. So we have to tell ourselves whatever it is we, we need to tell ourselves, given the environment we're in, to feel safe and comfortable in that scenario. Okay, now with this awakening happening, that nice and comfortable scenario is no longer working for you. And as hard as you try to go back to whatever it was that kept you feeling comfortable, and a lot of us acquire addictions, which, you know, that's what we used. It might be addictions to alcohol, addiction to drugs, sex, money, working. Oh boy, I was a huge workaholic in my own life. Um, whatever that addiction is, it, we, we do those things because it helps us feel somewhat safe and comfortable. But in the awakening process, even though we're doing those things, it's not working quite the way it did before. It never really did work, actually, because as long as we're separate from that divine part of us, not really in touch with that natural joy that's in us, having to manufacture out of our mind artificial emotions to keep us feeling alive, as long as we're living in that kind of a scenario, nothing ever really does work for us because we're not really ever in touch with that natural joy. But it worked to a degree and we were basically okay with it. But in this awakening that's taking place right now, it doesn't really work to the degree that it used to. And it's very disconcerting and feels very like, what in the hell is going on? That's probably the biggest symptom is that life around you starts feeling like it's fallen apart, things happen, you might lose your job, your relationship breaks down, or your things around you break down, the car breaks down, so whatever it is, something that really pulls you out of your comfort zone and you're having a hard time going back, finding that comfort zone. That's probably the biggest symptom. There's other symptoms, the body is sort of transitioning, because really what the awakening also means is that the divine that we really are wants to meld with this human body and literally live in the body and really have experiences through the body, something that we've never really allowed it. As I started talking about earlier, we on purpose decided to take that divine part of us and to put it in a box and to push it away, lock it and throw the key away. So we've never really given that divine, which actually knows everything and has all kinds of potentials, any potential that we could ever imagine and ever dream of, it's all right there within the divine. But we've never given it a chance to come in and work within our lives and within our bodies and literally go out and experience life through the eyes of this loving, compassionate, joyful being. And it's just not a choice that we've made. And that's okay, that's been okay, but now that's what the divine is wanting to do. It wants us to find a way to bring it out of its box and allow it to have experience through us. So another symptom is that the body is literally readjusting itself so that it can allow the divine to be living in it. You know, it's, it's a whole nother uh, consciousness in a way living in the body that's never happened before. So the body is, the whole DNA structure itself of the body is literally re structuring itself. It's a, something that's taking place. There's nothing we have to do. It's just something that's taking place during this particular time because our collective consciousness has come to the all collective agreement that the way we've been living just doesn't really serve us anymore and we want something new. And in order to get that something new, however, we all know that we have to take personal collective responsibility for ourselves 
And it's not something that somebody can just somehow ma wave a magic wand or we can elect some political figure who finally figures out how to create just the right programs to make everything just perfect for everybody or, you know, nothing like that. I mean, it's not that we're not talking about that. Nothing like that's ever going to solve the, the problems that we f perceive are out there. But when we find a connection inside and we find that true peace and joy that's there, once you've had that experience with that, you know, the mind has manufactured drama, so you're not going to just pop out of drama and be in that joy from now and forevermore because you've got all these habits. Okay, so you're in this process where you're going to find yourself kind of going back and forth. But in that process, the wonderful thing is, is that once you've found that place, which is what I call the observer, you're inside and you're looking and you're realizing that you're not really your emotions, you're not really even your thoughts, you're not even really your body. You're this consciousness that's observing all of this life unfolding and every choice that you're making. You're in, and when you can go in and, and, and tap into that observer, then you find that peaceful place again so that when you get, find yourself being pulled back out because of habit, you can observe it and take a look at it again. So uh, there's another experience that uh, has to do with what I call emotional aspects. Again, I, I've mentioned that the mind manufactures emotion. I call them emotional aspects that at some point in time, whether this lifetime or another, we had an experience in which since we weren't aware of our divine part of us, which is very compassionate and very loving, if I had to use an analogy, kind of like mom who when you're a little boy and you are scraped your knee and you're hurting, you can come, run over to mom and jump up on mom's lap and cry for a few minutes and mom's holding you in her heart, you know, and, and, you're, and comforting you and letting you know that everything's going to be okay. And when you realize that this is a safe moment and you're feeling okay, you leap right out of there. doesn't matter if your leg's scraped and there's blood trickling down your leg. That's the last thing you're thinking of. You leap right out and you're right back out to play because you're safe and everything's okay. That's what I'm talking about. That kind of part of you that's inside, that's compassionate, that's loving, like mom or dad who has the ability to bring great comfort to you, that's inside you, that part of you. But at the time when you would had some emotional traumatic situation occurred, you didn't know that that was the case, that you had that inside of you. And there may not have been mom or dad around. So, when you were finding yourself hurting, going through a lot of trauma, the b first thing you want to do is find that whatever safety is, and if you can't get it from outside you, then you'll push away that trauma and it kind of gets locked off someplace inside your psyche. It's energy that's been molded by you. You're the creator of it. You've molded it into a trauma, and now it's on the outs. I should say now it's in your psyche someplace. It's, I was going to started to say it's on the outside of you. In, in a way, it kind of is. It's, it's not part of your everyday existence, moment to moment, but it is part of you very much so. And it's not going to go away because energy can't be created nor destroyed. It's just a, a, something that you've created it and put it into that form, you see. So, but another nature of energy is that when you do take energy and you stick it into a particular kind of box, it doesn't want to stay in that box. It wants, it always seeks a way to, to move and flow. Energy needs to flow. So if we clam energy up and make it stuck, it's going to find a way to come out of that. And so it works together with the mind to bring into your external environment something that will trigger it to come up so that you can deal with it. So this is what happens in our lives is that we'll constantly find ourselves in a situation. There's always that person that seems to annoy you, you know, or whatever it is. And you might change jobs or get rid of that person. And lo and behold, someone else comes along and they're bringing that same annoyed feeling up. And it's because you haven't really taken time to resolve what you created once upon a time. That emotional aspect that you created was in you. And the outside world is in support and service to you. And energy wants to help you free up that to allow it to flow again. That's what energy wants to do. So it's going to create and manufacture the outside circumstances that's going to bring that annoyance right back up into your face so that you can experience it 
and find that compassionate, divine, caring part of you to talk to that part of you that's annoyed and to give that annoyed part reassurance to let it know it's, it's okay. It's okay. Everything's going to be okay. I love you. You know, whatever it is. 